Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about some ways to keep your Gmail organized to make it easier to navigate. I got a lot of questions on the video I made about how to use Gmail, which I will link in the description box if you haven't seen it yet, about where to put emails, how to put them in different folders, how to keep them separate. You know, if you're somebody who uses the same email for everything, it can be hard to distinguish what's work-related, promotional emails, and personal emails. So that's what I wanted to cover today. I will leave a list of topics that I'll be covering in the description box along with their timestamps if you're looking for something specific or you need to skip around. If you like this video while you're watching it, please give it a thumbs up and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about are all the different inbox types that you have with Gmail. So if you click on the gear here, you'll see that these are your settings and if you scroll down to inbox type, there are a lot of different inbox types which can be helpful to change up your workflow but they're not helpful if you don't know what they do so let's start with default I'll just show you what each of these options do so default is going to categorize your emails chronologically from when they came in when you received them regardless if you read them or not so as you can see there's a mix of unread emails which are these like lighter colored ones and then red emails which are these non highlighted ones and then there are these tabs up top, social and promotions, and these are just default by Gmail. So social is any kind of like social media platform like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, anything that has your email that's gonna send you like notifications. And then promotions are basically like coupon codes and things like that from you know various vendors like clothing stores, Best Buy, places like that. Important first, like it says, will categorize your important emails at the top, and then as you can see, everything else that's not important is here at the bottom. And you might be wondering, what does Gmail categorize as an important email? Gmail uses who you email and how often you email them, which emails you open, which emails you reply to, keywords that are in emails that you usually read, which emails you star, archive, or delete. So that's how they deem what's important and you can actually kind of teach Gmail what's important by manually unchecking if something is important or not. So for me, the Roku channel is not important. So I'm gonna just click that little yellow tab and it's gonna be marked as unimportant and now Gmail is gonna start recognizing the more you manually mark things as important or not important. That's how they're gonna learn what to prioritize in your inbox if you have this option selected. Unread first is my personal favorite. I leave emails that I need to get done as unread. So if you have this section selected as your inbox type, your unread messages are gonna come up at the top and everything else as you see is gonna be at the bottom. I actually opt to collapse everything else as well so that I just see my unread emails in my inbox which is what I prefer. Starred is any messages that you have manually marked as a star will come up at the top and then everything else will be at the bottom. So no matter how old these emails are, and then again, everything else will be at the bottom. Priority inbox is gonna group your unread emails and your important emails together and put those at the top. So anything that falls into the category of unread and important, is gonna be right up here at the top. And then multiple inboxes is something that you can fully customize. I personally think that unread first, along with the tips that I'm gonna talk about next, is the best way to organize your inbox. So now that you've chosen your inbox setting, labels are the next most important thing. And for me, truly the key to keeping your Gmail inbox organized. So I'm gonna show you how to create them and also, of course, how to use them. So let's say, for example, you sent out an email invitation to a party and you sent it to a bunch of recipients and they're all sending you back emails that they're confirming that they can't go and you wanna keep track of all of the responses. So how do you do that? So an example would be by creating a label called RSVP as one example. So if you click the drop down for more and click create new label, I could say RSVP. I can create this label. And as you can see, it's now living on the left hand side and I can actually change it to a different color, which again, I think is a huge, huge important factor when you're creating your labels 
is color coding them so that, that you can actually see your inbox easier. And then another tip I have is, I'm gonna edit the label really quick, putting an asterisk in front of your label name, which I will show you why in just a minute. So let's just save that. And now any RSVPs that come up, I can label them as such. So let's just say this was an RSVP. I can label it as RSVP. And as you can see, anything with an asterisk is gonna come up on the top of the label list, which is why I recommend putting an asterisk next to at least like really important ones so that they'll come up at the top. Click RSVP, apply, and now that one is labeled as RSVP and I can see it distinguished in my inbox. But not only that, I can also go to the left hand side here and click RSVP and see all of the emails that people have responded RSVPing to this event. So not only is it easier to see in your inbox, it does create a sort of folder for where all of your labeled items are kept so that you can view them easier and all in one place. You can also select what labels you want to show up on the left hand side here by clicking more and manage labels. And then if you scroll down to labels, you can show or hide in label list and also show them only if they're unread, but if they're read, you can choose not to show them. I think it's best to just show all of your labels on the left hand side to give you the easiest access to seeing all of them. You can also choose to hide any of these other items if you want to hide your trash. You can just click hide and it'll go away. You can of course just show it again. But that's how you kind of customize the left hand side of your inbox to make it easier for you to view and process your emails. If you don't want to manually label things, you can actually set up email filters. The only downside with filters is that you do have to enter the email address that you want filtered. So you have to know where these emails are coming from. I'm going to show you an example though of a filter that I created. I'm going to go to my settings, filters and blocked addresses, Bed Bath & Beyond. I have unsubscribed from the Bed Bath & Beyond email list countless times and I still get emails from them. It's really frustrating. So what I've done instead is set up a filter. I'm going to show you how I set it up. It says from Bed Bath & Beyond and then if I click continue, here are all the options I can do. So I opted to automatically delete any emails that come from Bed Bath & Beyond. I do not need them and they send emails all the time. So I just immediately have them deleted. But you can do this with, obviously, as you can see, apply the label. So if you know that you know, you're on a list serve or something like that, you know where your emails are coming from, you can set up a filter to automatically apply the label. So you know, if you want all of your bank statements to have a label, which is what I do, you know, I can change it from, you know, my bank notifications email that I get, apply the label, bank statements, and then they're all going to be labeled that way so I can look at them on the left hand side or easily identify them in my inbox. We are of course going to continue with deleting any Bed Bath & Beyond emails that come through. You can also choose to have your filtered messages bypass your inbox and go immediately into like a labeled folder. So for example, for my work email, I work in real estate and I'm signed up for this listserv that sends out properties that aren't yet on the market. There are a ton of properties that are put up on this listserv, so I would get them flooded in my inbox all the time and not all these properties are gonna relate to what my clients or I am looking for. So I have opted to, I put the email address of the listserv here, clicked continue, and then I opted to skip my inbox and apply a specific label to it so that on the side here, if I get the emails, I still want to see them eventually. I just don't want them all flooding my inbox. I can go over to the left hand side here every once in a while, click on that label and see all the emails that have come through without having them crowd my inbox. It's also important to note that if you set up filters or labels, it's not going to apply to previous emails. It's going to apply to your emails from this point on from when you created it and saved it. So if you go back in your inbox, you know, I might not see any bank statements from the past, but now anytime, you know, my 
bank statements from Chase or Capital One or Bank of America or wherever come through, they're gonna be labeled that way. This can also be particularly helpful if you wanna create labels for you know action items or to-dos. You can create a label called to-do and we can just change the color to maybe you know, red so we know that we need to do it. Maybe I want to leave a Nordstrom review. So I can click on it and label it as to do, apply, and now I can see that option in my inbox. So this can be helpful if you want to mark tasks as completed, outstanding, to do, things like that. I also want to talk about archiving emails because this can be a really, really good way to clean up your inbox. If you don't want a specific email sitting in your inbox anymore that you've read, that you've dealt with, maybe your project is done, you're done with that client, but you don't want to delete it because if you delete an email, as you can see, if, it's, if you put it in the trash, messages that have been in the trash for more than 30 days will automatically be deleted. Maybe you still want that information to reference. A good way to get rid of it from your inbox is to archive it. So let's go into this email right here. I decide that I'm done with this, but maybe I want to come back to it. I can choose to archive it and now you will not find it in your inbox anymore. So if you archive something on accident and you want to get it back, if you go to more and go to all mail, it should be in there. This was the one that I archived. You can also search for label archive and anything that has been archived will be in here. And then you can click on it, and then if you wanna move it back to your inbox, you can do that as well. And lastly, I wanna show you how to snooze conversations or emails so that they will pop up back in your inbox at a later time. So you can do this by right-clicking. Right-clicking is obviously gonna bring up all of these options, which can be super helpful to just quickly move emails without having to click into the email move it and then go back to your inbox. So I find this really helpful, but you can click snooze and then it'll give you, you know, like standard options to snooze until works kind of the same way as an alarm clock. Once you snooze it at a specific time you pick, it will pop back up in your inbox, but you can also manually pick a date and time to snooze it until. So if you want to snooze something for 30 minutes while you work on another project and then have it remind you again in 30 minutes, snoozing is a really good way to do that. So that is it for today. Those were some of my suggestions on keeping your Gmail organized. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate the support and I will see you in my next video. Bye.